Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Well, guys, we're going to talk about some Chinese medical qigong. And this is a great PDF, um, a fantastic book. These books are very expensive. They could end up costing you hundreds of dollars, depending on uh, just when you're looking for them. And I'm lucky enough to have, have these books and have studied them. And they're very in-depth, amazingly in-depth. Uh, there's 601 pages in this volume and there's five volumes in all and this is part of the curriculum for becoming a doctor of medical qigong and it gets into great depth on understanding qi and how it all works and it's a very very uh, deep subject to say the least and so I just want to go over one of the most basic concepts with you guys so you can get an understanding. And as this says, more than 5,000 years ago, the ancient Chinese masters of esoteric healing came to the understanding that everything is composed of the same energetic substance, which they call qi. And these ancient ma masters observed that there is a oneness and a wholeness in all existence and that everything is energetically interconnected as one body. And so this flies in the face of, of what Western science has thought for the longest time until we started to understand quantum theory and understanding quantum entanglement. And then now we realize they had it right the whole time. And the more we look and understand from the ancient uh, Chinese system here and then also the ancient Vedic system over in India we recognize at least in my mind that this knowledge is leftover knowledge from the advanced civilizations that have been here before this is extremely accurate extremely right on completely in my mind true and uh, it, these are ways and techniques of understanding the complexity of not only the physical body but the energy bodies because there are so many different layers to our being and they knew we are interdimensional multi-dimensional beings and our consciousness expands and is not simply contained in this physical vessel and also that our outlook and our consciousness affects our reality it actually creates our reality so everything boils down to the life force the chi and star wars has done a good job of bringing this basic knowledge to the public <clears throat> of course there's so much more to it than what is shown in star wars and you know basically there are different types of chi and chi itself comes in different forms but it is all interconnected and so traditional Chinese medicine is primarily based on the understanding of the transformations of qi. The ancient Chinese believed that all transformations happened under the influence of qi. The birth, aging, and death of all things within heaven and earth, including wind, clouds, thunder, rain, water, mountains, forests, deserts, oceans, humans, animals, and insects are all caused by, the, by and formed out of qi. Although energy may appear to take on many different forms, all things in nature, and in fact all things in the universe, are intrinsically woven together so that we are, quite literally, all sym symbiotically one with the universe through the system of Qi. Qi is vibrating in a constant energetic motion within all things. It's the catalyst for everything to relate and interrelate within the universe. The ancient Chinese believe that the qi of yin and yang fulfills the great void, and the great void is called wuji. And so the great void, we can conceptualize, actually it, it goes perfectly in line with the Kabbalah, Hebrew mysticism, also in, in Gnosticism, as well as Hinduism and Buddhism. So, so we, we see that all these traditions are interrelated and are really saying the same thing in different words. And they really do fly in the face of fundamentalist point of view. And so it gets you thinking about, well, then where did the fundamentalist point of view come from? Well, it's a system of control, and that's the bottom line, and also of keeping the knowledge of the truth out of the public's reach because the truth really will set you free and you will recognize the power that you have within 
And we all do have tremendous power, which obviously then that takes their ability to control us, mind, body, and spirit, away from them. And that's been part of what's been happening for thousands of years now. So as we understand, you know, chi is vibrating in a constant energetic motion within all things. It's a catalyst for everything to relate and interrelate within the universe. So the ancient Chinese believe that the chi of yin and yang fulfills the great void. Now, the great void, if we look at Hinduism and the god Shiva, which so many people view these in, in Western terms, not understanding the bigger picture, because Shiva actually means that which is not in reference to the void. And it's through mind that things become manifest and not the brain, but the mind being different. The brain is just, again, it, it's just, you know, it's part of the processes for operating this physical vehicle in this 3D reality. But the mind extends beyond the brain and the mind is vast. And the great mind is what forms all things as we recognize the divine influence on this plane of existence, the uniformity, and the, the we can look at like the programming, the computer programming is so intricate and so in-depth and just so well put together when we look at things like the Fibonacci sequence and the fractal nature of everything in this universe, it becomes apparent that most definitely there is a great architect, a a great designer you know there is a source of all of this and yet it's it's way more than what we have been led on in the west to believe and there is an interconnectedness that exists in all things which intrinsically brings to the individual great possibilities great personal power to manifest and develop their own life without the need of any intermediaries like the church that has developed. And again, the church controlled all things in, in the Western culture. And uh, if you were rich enough in ancient times, you could uh, pay an indulgence and be forgiven of sins or divorced when the average person who didn't have the money wouldn't be able to, as we saw that control that has been over this world. And that control is extended back for thousands of years. But this is all leftover knowledge from the higher civilizations. And it's extremely accurate. So chi is stored in the body in the form of energetic pools, creating the energetic matrix of the internal organs. From those internal pools, the body's life force energy flows in the form of rivers and streams. These energetic rivers and streams form the body's vessels, channels, and collateral systems. And uh, as we look over here, understanding this, so we have what we would call basically three Dantians. And these Dantians are those energetic reservoirs of energy. And so these are places where the energy pools in different vibratory rates. So it, it, the chi can be basically vibrating at such a rate that we would call it Jing. And Jing is stored in the lower Dantian. So when we see here on this figure, Lower Dantian is Zheng, middle Dantian, Qi, and then the upper Dantian, Shen. And so we have the three treasures of Zheng, Qi, and Shen. Shen is basically spirit. And uh, as we've talked about Zheng, Zheng is thought of as essence. And so as we store energy in these points, for one, it tends to travel upwards when it's full. So when you have an abundance of Jing, it'll naturally flow upwards through the central channel and cause the beginnings of abundance of Qi in the middle Dantian. And again, the lower Dantian is all about the physical body. So when we have an abundance of Jing, we'll have good health, we'll be vibrant, we'll have a lot of energy. A lot of physical energy 
and we'll be able to f- really have a passion for life and and fulfill ourselves in a physical way enjoying life and having the abundance of that vital force and then the middle dantian is all about emotions it's an emotional center and when that overflows then there will naturally be tremendous compassion for others tremendous love and positivity that develops and when that overflows and goes up into the upper dantian and is transformed into shen that's when we develop great spiritual powers discernment clarity but also really the ability to help others heal and the ability to connect to the higher realms in much much greater ways so again it kind of flows upwards jing qi and shen there's a candle analogy that's used often where jing is represented if we're looking at a candle by the wax and the wick of the candle the quality of the wax and the reserve of the wax available for burning determines the life of the candle your jing which is determined by your genetic inheritance and your deep energy reserves also what you're taking in food wise determines your longevity it takes a long time to deplete jing and is extremely hard to replenish so conserving it is important and so in that sense the ancient taoists would tend to as a male uh not ejaculate or ejaculate as as little as possible and you know that was done to basically preserve and hold on to the jing now that didn't mean that they didn't have sex and because they actually would in many cases and also they learned techniques to withhold from that ejaculation and yet build up the energy and pull in more life force which would actually end up giving them a greater sense of vitality even yet as they learned those techniques now some would basically just stay chaste and and not engage as well there were different schools of thought there and chi is represented by the flame of the candle it can sputter and smoke or it can burn brightly and evenly your chi is your vitality your daily energy it provides the source of light however it eventually consumes the candle when your chi is used efficiently your jing lasts longer chi is easily depleted through daily activity and when a person is healthy is easily replenished with sleep nourishment and breathing and then shen is the light that radiates from the burning candle the purpose of the candle is to light the darkness your shen is the radiance of your spirit when jing and qi are in abundance shen is released and then here we see a interrelationship between jing qi and shen and again jing re- residing in the lower dantian refine jing to produce qi guide qi to nourish spirit and you see over here it's all about the breath it really is all about the breath concentration guides the qi and you can train the qi to replenish the jing so this is why qi gong is such a powerful practice and we could think of these these three treasures all be in the same substance just basically vibrating at different rates and and that is the reality of it as well they're just simply vibrating at different rates and as you see here you can view it as a pyramid qi transforms the food and feeds the jing jing generates qi a centered shen extracts more efficiently the nutrients of the food and the energy from the air an abundant jing an abundant jing is the substratum of a strong and clear shen calming the breath the spirit gets centered an abundant qi gives you a powerful consciousness a focused shen activates the qi when the mind is quiet and empty the true qi is under one's control if one keeps a closed mind the danger of disease will disappear the mind is the owner of the energy and the energy is the owner of the blood a centered shen with high values does not waste energy the mind influences the breathing and so tremendously powerful practice learning how to cultivate the energy 
So what happens is as you're drawing in energy, getting an abundance of Jing and Qi, you will have what's called a Wei Qi field develop and get very strong. And the Wei Qi field, Wei is external, and um, Nei and Ei is internal. And so Wei is your external Qi field, and that is like your, that's your shields against disease, dis-ease. So as we build this up, you will be resistant to disease. And it's all about the energy because we are energy. That's what we are. Everything is energy. And so if you look at this, the five energetic fields, you could relate Jing to matter, Qi to energy, Shen to spirit, Wuji is the void, and then the Tao is, you could view it as prime creator or God. And there's different ways of looking at this as well and different systems. And so I wanted just to give you a brief overview. There is so much more to talk about, but I wanted to especially give you an overview on the three treasures. Again, Jing, Qi, and Shen. And by cultivating this energy through the practice of Qigong and meditation, you can give yourself abundant health, abundant vitality, but also peace in your heart and positivity, and then ultimately also strengthen your spirit and your connection to the higher realms and just that oneness, that knowing of the oneness of all things, which only comes by going inside. You're never going to experience that by just analyzing and using the left left side of the brain. It's something that can only be engaged by going deeply within. So I wanted to share this with you guys, give you guys a little uh, something to think about in terms of medical qigong. And as always, my friends, like, share, subscribe. There'll be more coming. Click the bell, get all the notifications. Thank you for your support on Patreon and Ko-Fi. God bless and namaste.